Get a load of tonight's guest list. Three reigning champions, two top challengers, and a whole lot of fun. In just moments, the greatest welterweight of all time, George St. Pierre, will be right here at this desk. We'll hear from former champ TJ Dillashaw, and all three champions from UFC 217 will be here as well. That's Yuani Young Jacek, Cody Garbrandt, and Michael the Count Bisping. Three days. Yes. Three days, Kenny. We're only three days from this super fight, GSP versus Bisping. But how did we get here? We got to ask Karen Bryan about that. KB, tell us how we got to where we are right now. Absolutely, champ. Will do. As you know, it has been a rocky road to UC 217, but we are almost there. On March 1st, Dana White announced the super fight will take place without announcing a date, but it was rumored for International Fight Week in July. Two months later, the UFC president canceled the fight due to an eye injury sustained by GSP. In July, Dana said the Bisping ship had sailed and GSP would fight for welterweight gold instead. Just two days later, apparently the ship had turned around when Dana hinted the super fight still had legs. Then on August 26th, the UFC officially announced Bisping versus GSP would headline UFC 217. It was a wild ride, but come Saturday night, it will all be worth it. Guys, back to you. Michael Bisping, who's been firing in all cylinders, a guy who really has found his power with his hands, putting it all together right now. Michael Bisping is on fire right now, but let's talk about George St. Pierre. They say that he's the best at not taking damage because he never fights where he's uncomfortable. If he's fighting a guy that can strike, he'll take him down. If he's fighting a good grappler, he makes him stand with him. He's the one guy that at the beginning, before we started seeing that next generation of talent, George St. Pierre was already there. A guy that could do everything inside the octagon, and it showed in these dominating performances he had over the course of so many years. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, everyone's talking about how he's been out for four years. He was ahead of everybody for a very long time. So I still think he's ahead of the game. He's a guy who never stopped training. Uh, I think his jab, his takedowns are always going to be a factor. And I think he likes this style matchup here against Michael Bisping for that reason. He does. And a lot of people like the style matchup against Michael Bisping, right? But when you get in there, you realize that Michael Bisping's a little bit better than you thought he was. We all say, let's get Bisping. Bisping's hard to take down. Bisping's very hard to hold down, and Michael Bisping is very active with his hands, and now he's developed his new friend, Left Hook Larry, and he said he's going to sleep George St. Pierre with a left hook. He's definitely bringing Larry with him on Saturday <laughs> night, and this is a guy who, like you said, DC, he loves that underdog role. He shines in that underdog role, but I tell you what, he doesn't just throw one or two strikes, and I think that's what makes Michael Bisping such, such a tough out. First of all, he's very fast for the division. He's going to need that speed against the smaller uh, George St. Pierre, so he's fast, but he also throws combinations, you know, four or five strike uh, combinations. Uh, and also, he's been very difficult to take down. Yes, and great cardio, right? People forget how great shape Michael Bisping is. Every time he gets in the octagon, never tires. You got to be ready to go at a very high pace if you're going to fight Michael Bisping. That has amazing conditioning. Well, Cody Garbrandt defends his bantamweight title for the first time against former champion and former teammate TJ Dillashaw. We'll hear from both fighters and break down that fight shortly. But in the first of three title fights, strawweight queen Yoani Young Jacek takes on former title challenger Rose Namajunas. And Namajunas, really, her skills were never in question. This is someone who is very skilled. She was a finisher through and through. to UFC tonight in New York City where a storm is brewing over the Big Owl and a storm has been brewing between teammates turned opposing coaches turned combatants Cody Garbrandt and TJ Dillashaw. TJ Dillashaw, come try me. Come on, bitch. Come on, me. It's instantly just angry. It's comical and embarrassing. My little bitch. Yeah. Go for it, dude. You're so tall. You're so tall, bro. You're like a prostitute on the corner bouncing around from the gym. And he doesn't bother me. The Mac truck doesn't worry about the pebble. Makes my job easy by him talking because he sounds like an idiot. I cannot wait for this fight to finally take place on Saturday. I am here with the former champ, TJ Dillashaw, just days before UFC 217. Have you been having a good fight week here in New York? Absolutely. It's been pretty easy. You know, weight cut's nice. Um, everything feels good. Game plan's coming together. Can't really complain. It's been awesome. Nice. You with that Cali tan out here, too, right now. So I gotta ask, you know, this feud has been going on for so long. 
Are you just exhausted by the whole thing at this point? I got nothing invested in it anymore. You know, you don't hear me talking about it. You don't hear me uh, wanting to complain about them. It's more the fact to let them keep talking. You know, I'll put a smile on my face, and then when the talking's all over, we get to step in the cage together, and I get to end it. I have to ask, though, did you take any of it personally? I mean, some of the things they said uh, really sort of maligned your character. Yeah, I mean, definitely at first, you know, especially with guys I knew very well, you know, guys I trained with for a long time. But, you know, it's all uh, mental warfare. It's all antics to try to get under my skin, try to make me angry, fight emotional, you know, because that's, that's what they need. Not only want, that's what they need me to do, because I know I'm the better fighter. So, obviously, you know, you've spent a lot of time before in the past training with Cody. What do you know about him as a fighter uh, that tells you you can beat him? You know, he's got a lot of holes in his game. Um, he, he's very talented, he's quick, he's powerful, but, you know, I think he's, he's pretty one-dimensional, you know, and I'm going to take advantage of that. I'm going to fight a smart fight. Well, we talked about this the other day, uh, throwing back to something you guys said on The Ultimate Fighter. You said you have a fi higher fight IQ. He says he has a right hand, and I asked you the other day, I said, hey, the way he beat Dominic made me think Cody's got an IQ, but what's your answer to that? I disagree. I mean, he proved me right. He held up his right hand. That's exactly what I was talking about, you know? Um, but I, I just think Dominic underestimated him, came in a little bit too emotional, and then had to play catch-up the entire fight, you know? He was trying to catch back up from those rounds he lost, and uh, I don't know, I just didn't understand why he was so emotional. No, even even though you aren't maybe as emotionally invested in the beef, how good will it feel for you if you are victorious? How good will it feel for you to be able to shut him up? Oh, it's going to be great. I mean, not only just to shut him up, but just to get my belt back, you know, something I feel is rightfully mine that I, I still have a bad taste in my mouth about losing it, you know, so it's going to be amazing. Nothing nothing beats winning it, you know, that, that gets around the first time, but it's going to be such an amazing feeling. So that was an incredible fight that time you took it from Burrell, and that was something that uh, is very memorable. I'm curious, you know, people have been talking a lot about you and Mighty Mouse. How much does that fight uh, loom in, in what you really want to do in your career? Absolutely. I mean, he's the popcorn kingpin. I mean, that's where I want to be. Um, you know, a couple split decision losses, and I'm on a huge fight win streak. They're reversed in my decision, you know? So, Mighty Mouse is someone that I know I could beat. I think uh, it's a tough fight for him. That's why he turned it down. Um, that's something that I would love to prove to do, because I can make 25s. I'm not a very big 35-pounder. And uh, why not fight the best? And that's what I'm here to do. All right. Well, you are talking about fighting 35-pounders, 25-pounders. You're probably going to be having a little 6- or 7-pounder soon. We've got a little gift for you. Uh, Mrs. Dillashaw is pregnant, so we have got a nice little onesie for you guys. Uh, uh, congratulations on the impending little one. I'm so excited for you guys. Uh, cannot wait for this fight as well and send it back over to the guys for more on this fantastic championship battle. KB, thank you very much. The fight is absolutely amazing. Let's dive into this bantamweight grudge match between Garbrandt and Dillashaw. Now, Cody Garbrandt actually has a 100% takedown defense rate. Just unbelievable. And he showed this is a guy, DC, that can fight going forwards or backwards. And he always has that right hand that can stop a fight in an instant. But he's going against a guy, TJ Dillashaw, who's very good offensively and defensively. This guy has a lot of variety of strikes. Tremendous this wrestler wow what a fuck tj dillashaw has the ability to do everything you watch him in the morale fight when nobody thought he had a chance morale was number one pound for pound and he went out there and he dominated him dominated him with punches with kicks with cardio with pace with pressure this is a young man that can do it all in the octagon do not miss the Ultimate Fighter tonight at 10 Eastern and Pacific, followed by Tough Talk at 11, only on FS1. Now over to the guys with a champion who coached season 23 of the Ultimate Fighter, the baddest woman on the planet, Joanna Champion. That's right, KB, the strawweight queen. Got MSG rocking last year when she defeated Carolina Kovalkiewicz. Champ, how does it feel to return for another title fight? at the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden. It feels so amazing. I'm very excited to be back uh, to the city, to New York City, and to the Garden. I fought at the Garden last year at 205, the biggest uh, the biggest U UFC card ever, and I'm happy to be back. It's my city. I think that next year I will fight in Dallas in May, and then again uh, in, uh, in New York on November. You've made a lot of history. You're about to make even more history. You could be uh, the person who break Ronda, Ronda Rousey's record for the most women title fight. And wins. I will break the record yeah. of seven titles what does that fights mean to in the women division. So uh, it means a lot, you know. But uh, what I care about uh, now, uh, I care about Saturday, you know. The Rose is my next big uh, challenge. And uh, more than that, I want to stay undefeated. It's my goal, it's my dream to be undefeated and in the future retire as undefeated. So 
like I, like I said, it's more important uh, than all, all of this record, you know? At times in the build-up to fights, you can be a little bit mean, Ioana. Yeah, that stare down, yesterday. what did you say? What did you say in that stare down with Rose yesterday? Uh, yesterday? Yes. You said uh, a couple days ago, you couple, said something to her. A couple days ago, I don't she said you said she was mentally unstable. Or yeah, but, uh, and the thing, uh, so let me explain. Like, I, I don't follow uh, my opponents. I didn't know about her father. I, I didn't, I was not talking about uh, mental illness. I was talking, I was talking about her mental game. And like, now people judge me and they hate me for that. But let me make it straight. I was talking about her mental game because I know that she is having such a big problems with the uh, mental strength. Like sometimes she's like 30 minutes before the fight, she's like, I'm not fighting, I'm not going to the fight. She didn't want to do media. I'm enjoying this, I love this, and it's part of my job. Like the weight cut, like the training before every fight, we must deal with this. How she. She wants to be a champion, but she's not ready to uh, put on great work outside the octagon, outside the gym. So uh, there is something not right, but I, I'm always uh, very respectful to my opponents. And I would never talk about uh, someone with a mental illness. So it was just wrong. But what I said to her, that I give her no chance. <laughs> I was training for this fight for 13, 13 long weeks. I put on such a great work with Mikey Brown, uh, WEC former champion, uh, with Cattle Kubis, my two head coaches, other coaches with, uh, from ATT. And I moved to America Top Team 14 months ago, and I feel like I fly, I feel amazing, and I will put on such a great fight uh, this Saturday. I know that Michael Bisping and George St. Pierre are the fight of the night, but Joanna Champion is taking over the garden on Saturday, November 4th. <laughs> Guys, be there! One more, one more, please. <laughs> the New York Knicks are taking on the Houston Rockets right now at Madison Square Garden, but in just three days, they'll switch out the hardware for the toughest proving ground in sports, the UFC Octagon. Welcome back to UFC tonight outside the Fox News Channel World Headquarters in Manhattan. It has been a star-studded show, and it only gets better this weekend. Here is how you can watch all of the festivities Friday. Join me, Kenny, and Chris Weidman on FS1 for the Way in Show at 6 Eastern. Then Saturday, the pre-fight show on FS2 kicks off at 7, prelims at 8, pay-per-view at 10. Then head back to FS1 for the post-fight show with me and the guys. Now, for more on UFC 217, it is time for the final round. All right, DC, you are calling the fights. <laughs> you don't need to make any picks tonight, but blow, let's start with you. You want a champion versus Rose number you. I got to do all the work again, huh, DC? All right, all right, all right that's fine. Uh, listen, I got to go with you, Anna. Uh, I think that, you know, hearing her saying she did a 12-week camp, said she's the sharp, felt the sharpest she's ever been. Um, I don't see anyone in that division beating her. Got to go with the champ. All right, now this is one we've really been looking forward to. I know you like this one. Bantamweight champ Cody Garbrandt or former champ TJ Dillashaw. Another tough one to pick, my goodness. Um, I got to go with Garbrandt. I think for TJ to be effective, he's got to get into the pocket, and that's where Garbrandt is most effective, and uh, I see him maybe landing one of those big shots. This is the one I've been waiting for. <laughs> this is what I've been yeah. waiting for, KB. Okay. This is the one. Can he <laughs> try to slide under the desk? He tried. I got to go. He, he tried to flee the interview. And Someone calling me. Still and Kenny Floyd. Uh, I, I hate this one. I'm friendly with both these guys. I've known GSP for a long time. He's a former teammate, and, and Michael Bisping has been a pleasure to work with for a long time. He's, a, he's, 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 a, he's not a welterweight. That's the problem. I see this going the distance. I see it being a five-round war, but I'm going with GSP. Still GSP! One, and it might be a controversial one. Well, that won't help you with Bisping. Yeah, no, I know. You can say 
say it's gonna be close, but it ain't gonna I... make it easier when Mike comes Shut back. Shut <laughs> If we get that and still cake, Kenny doesn't Miss get Big, I love you. You know it. I know you do. All right, that is it for us. Thank you so much to all of our guests. Make sure you watch all of UFC 217 coverage this weekend. We start on Friday with the weigh-in show on FS1. Have a great night, everybody. Thanks for watching. Yeah.